Yeah. Wrote Chris, our own. Chris Cuomo was yeah. like, I want to get Mr. Gallup on the phone. <laughs> this is Chris Cuomo. Well, first off, uh, there is no Mr. Gallup. And second, you're naked. I don't know if this is another <laughs> wife yoga It's video. what I do. Hmm. Well, then I guess I'll take Mr. Quinnipiniac. <laughs> <laughs> Put your d*** away, Chris. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Let's get into the polls here because everyone has been talking about this. And, and I think, listen, polls matter. You can't be someone who entirely discounts them, but right. the methodology matters as well. And I think we, and we'll come back to this, polls are just as much, or they have morphed into uh, just as much a tool to try and shape public opinion uh, yeah. as much as they're supposed to be sort of a temperature gauge of public opinion. Yeah. But this is the newest CNN poll. Let them say it. Is this translating into support for his opponent in November, Joe Biden? Uh, it overwhelmingly is. Take a look at this matchup that we wow. have. It's Jeez. just, it's unbelievable to me. 55% of voters He's being voiced over right by the kid with glasses from Polar Joe Express. <laughs> only 41% say they vote for the president. And that 55% is so important because it means that Biden's over 50%. I went back, I looked at the <laughs> polls back really, in 2016. Yeah. From this point onward, Hillary Clinton never reached this level she never got there. She never got above 50 percent. So this means, especially looking at the other polling, that the president will have to take back some of Biden's supporters if, in fact, he wants to win. OK, mm. either first shave your chest or wear a tie. <laughs> Choose There's something very disturbing about uh, that chest hair with, and, you know, when you look at the poll, and that, could you imagine that guy opening yeah. a Christmas present? This is exactly what I wanted. The best of the guess who. Yeah. <laughs> something that I think is they shouldn't have done, and it's silly, and this is a perfect example of ego. And Trump, the Trump campaign sent a, a cease and desist letter <laughs> to awesome. CNN, which, of course, they've ignored. <laughs> but, and, and I don't say that he shouldn't send a cease and desist because it's inaccurate. Right. I just don't think it looks good. Not the optic sure. right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's look at the actual methodology of the poll. So it may come as no surprise um, that the source of the poll, uh, or the worst polls that they're discussing there uh, for Donald Trump, is CNN. Yeah, that's the actual source ah, for yeah. the poll. And uh, <laughs> if you're taking into the methodology, <laughs> again, for people who go, this looks really bad. Well, yeah, Hillary sure. Clinton, well, hold on a second. If you're taking different sample sizes, only 25% were Republicans, 32% Democrats, and 44% independents. And what really matters there is whoever's wow. conducting the poll, that high number of independents, you can really stack that, that deck. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, can, you can hand pick independents. Let's look at how CNN is framing their own poll. Okay, a couple of things here, but um, this is where they say that there has been overwhelming support for the protest, oh, wow. but see the catch. This is one of the first sort of oh, measures of whether or not people are agreeing with these protests or not. And what we see is that they overwhelmingly are agreeing with the protests. 84% say that they are justified, these peaceful protests. Uh, 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 okay. 83% said that these, these uh, peaceful, the word peaceful was slipped in there. 84% uh, yeah. yeah. of people support peaceful protests. What about, what about, Violent protests. Yeah, right. Did we ask them? Yeah. The number drops to 27%. Oh. And keep in uh, mind, that's with a sample a of 75% non-Republican voters. And this is something that I think is very important because, first off, we've showed how the uh, the sampling did. And by the way, we're talking about peaceful protests. Can you name me any major city where over the course of these two weeks, any major city, I'm not talking about 20 people down in a suburb, yeah. any major city where once the lights went out, the protest didn't result in any violence. And keep in mind, when I say that, I'm not saying any protest where there wasn't $25 million in property damage like yeah. you saw in Minneapolis right. alone. Let's just compare it to the Tea Party, meaning zero crime. That's right. the standard, zero crime. Cleaner than when they got there. Any yeah. big city where that's been the case in the last two weeks. I you can't, can't name any. one. Nope. Nope. Um, now, again, there have been isolated protests, small, yeah. and I want to be in the suburbs yeah, right. in the middle of the day, and then uh, the lights go down and uh, the tear gas comes up. And by the way, every, it should be 100% of Americans okay with peaceful protests. Yes. That's part of one of the rights that we have. We can protest injustice right. yeah. peacefully. I would answer Everybody yes. Everybody should be fine with I that. I would answer yes if the question was peaceful protest. Who were the other 13 or whatever percent it was? Mm, Jerks. Fascist bees. <laughs> <laughs> no protest. <laughs> it's their instinct. Um, it's instinct. Here's something too that's pretty important. There's a difference between polling people on what they think of a personality yeah. versus specific policies, right? So let's go to some specific policies because they talk about Donald Trump and how he's not polling very well in yeah. any given area, but the poll is really, what do you think of Donald Trump on blank? Well, when you yeah. go to specific policies, and I think this is important because 71% of Americans, we've talked about this, they support using the National Guard to address 
protests and mm -hmm. demonstrations. Yeah. That's 71%. So that's different from that's, that's how do you high. feel about peaceful protests. Yeah. 58% supported sending in the actual military. Wow. Right? 58% supported, 71% support using the National Guard. Yeah. Which candidate supported the National Guard? Which mm. candidate excoriated the president for wanting to send in the National Guard? There's only one person who's had the balls to say, all right, we're going to send in the National Guard. And that's going against the grain with everyone in the media and entertainment industry. So it's important to keep that in context. Now, I say this because that was pointed to as the most, as extreme right wing, right? Radical yeah, right wing exactly. extremists, fascism, they want to send in the National Guard. 71% of Americans, not saying that polling makes something morally justified. No, in this not. case, constitutionally, I believe it's morally justified <laughs> to protect the rights of citizens. It's legal. That being said, 71% of Americans supported it. Now let's contrast that, that's radical right wing extremism, send in the National Guard with radical left wing extremism. Defunding the police and renaming streets and buildings. No, 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 no. The no, public no. outcry over George Floyd's death has ignited debate and action on police reform. And a lot of people advocating for what they have taken to calling defunding the police. The phrase even appears in large yellow letters on the newly named Black Lives Matter Plaza on 16th Street near the White House. Well, we're talking about police, <laughs> oh. uh, defunding the police, um, wildly unpopular. Only 16% yeah. of Americans support defunding the police, wow. while 65% oppose it. 19% are unsure. I guess those are the, the SoundCloud yeah. rappers. But again, this is so <laughs> remarkable because some people will say, well, you're misrepresenting it. Defund the police. That just, that just means defunding it to a degree. Some people believe that, but that's not what is being demanded by Black Lives Matter. Right. You have the mayor of Minneapolis who checked his privilege and recognized his own brokenness as a white person. Yeah be drummed out of the core by yeah. thousands of people yeah. for saying that he didn't support the outright abolition of police. That is not a minority opinion. That's the Minneapolis City Council opinion. Let's be clear. So yeah. even if you're saying, well, that poll might be, might be tainted, 65% oppose it. Only 16% of Americans support that policy. So this is why this is important to me when they constantly say, we have this radical extreme right wing, uh, right wing on YouTube, right? People yeah. going on the radical rabbit hole. Let's take the furthest right opinion as it was presented, sending in the National Guard. How dare you? This is fascism. 71% of Americans don't see it that way. They support it. Then let's take the furthest left opinion that we can have right now in this current conflict, yeah. defunding the police, 65% opposed to it. So I ask you, which wing, as, as represented officially by the heads of their party, is more radical? There are several reasons, by the way, that pollsters have gotten things wrong. Absolutely. Remember when it used to be yeah. trust silver, trust Nate Silver? Mm -hmm. Now it's just like, <laughs> oops. <laughs> yeah. That's the sl that's the that's his website subtext. It's, the, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like so, a gift now. <laughs> so it has a lot to do, like you said, with how the media covers Donald Donald Trump. There's something yeah. called uh, social di social desirability bias. Yeah. And I'm going to get a little bit wonky here, but I'll try and keep it short because I know that you you know we are in pink hairdos. Yes. Um, <laughs> social desirability bias. Okay, it's the tendency of respondents in polls or surveys. They lie about their actual beliefs sometimes because they want to answer in a way that they view as more socially acceptable. Yeah. Okay? So as it relates to voting, uh, this social desirability bias, I'm saying this so that you know what it is. But you'll, if you haven't been to college, you'll probably hear about it there. It created something called the Bradley effect, okay? Named after Tom Bradley. He was a black candidate, lost in the 80s in California. It was a gubernatorial race, uh, despite the fact that he was leading in the polls. But people didn't want to be perceived as racist. Exactly. They said, oh, I'll, vote, I'll vote for that guy. And then, they, and then they went back home and they said, you're voting for that guy? I said, no. <laughs> uh, no. So you just told them no. that you were going to vote for that guy. I said, yeah, it's because right behind him was a Black Panther with a baton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, they said they were going to vote for him because it was, even though they weren't going to vote yeah. for him, right? And then there have been case studies in this. Now, let's, for context, take a look at the way the media has actually covered President Trump. Most presidents would use a crisis like that as an opportunity to bring the country together and to denounce hatred. But not this president. Over the last 12 hatred. months, Trump has instead amplified his racist rhetoric and policies. Oh, we, we said I talked he did. about the president. The president is a racist. As a matter of fact, I've known that the president is a dangerous human being, a would-be dictator who would move in the direction that he's doing. President Trump today denying that his racist tweets were racist. <laughs> oh my gosh. Got it. And today, good. it is wow. the United wow. States of America the former beacon of the free world that is the subject of global revulsion and disgust 
because of the raw, ugly racism and ethno-nationalism of our president. And by the way, every single source for those is the previous clip. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See CNN clip. B. I <laughs> knew for a long time Donald Trump could be a racist and dangerous man. Really? How'd you know that? I seen it. <laughs> All the other times I said that. Wait, you wait, remember? Exactly. Jake Tapper and shit. Good. Okay. Now we understand. Um, So the principle, again, not wanting people, we talk about the Bradley effect, to perceive you as racist. Well, how do you think people are going to respond when the media consistently says, if you support Donald Trump, you're a racist. Racist, racist, racist. The MAGA symbol, the OK symbol, which is, by the way, don't tell Home Alone 2. It's on the cover. Today for crying out loud, yeah. is, uh, this is racist, this is white supremacy. If you vote for Donald Trump, it's white supremacy. Check your privilege. Voting for Donald Trump is white privilege. Yeah. What You probably will want to avoid being perceived as racist. And so that's another reason that the polls can't be relied upon. Not always, but specifically we've seen historically with Donald Trump. Another thing that isn't measured by polls, we'll go to Michael Knowles in just two seconds here. Um, there's simple approval and disapproval, right? And it glosses over enthusiasm. Yeah. And I know yeah. that a lot of people say, well, enthusiasm doesn't matter because people are either going to vote or they're not. No, actually, it's a more significant determiner uh, in who actually gets out and votes on election day. And that's the reason there's this huge discrepancy between likely voters and then actual voters. And yeah. these polls are likely voters. And specifically, as a, really from... From Al Gore onward, outside of Barack Obama, you can think of Al Gore, you can think of John Kerry with John Edwards, and then you can think of of Hillary Clinton, of course. Um, There really has been an enthusiasm problem on the left. So Hillary Clinton, right, she led significantly among likely voters, but then trailed with actual voters. Mm -hmm. Now, recent polls, they show that among registered voters who support Trump, 55% of them are very enthusiastic about backing him. For Biden, it's about half, it's half at 28% are very enthusiastic. And I tell you what, those 28% are committed to the lie. Yeah, exactly. Well, and and just to go to your point, like when they say, I really, no, I'm going to enthusiastically (laughs) vote for Biden. It's like, you threw up in your mouth a little bit. I did. I swallowed it back. You got me. They'll probably forget, just like Joe Biden will, he'll forget he's running for president by election day. But nonetheless, um, in the CNN poll, it goes back to your point. 70% of the people that said that they were voting for Trump, they said it's because I want Trump to win. 60% of the people voting for Biden didn't say it because they like Biden. They said it's they were voting against Trump. Right. Right. So that's not enthusiasm for your candidate. That's just being pissed off in a moment. That right. can change drastically. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, we'll wrap this up. with. I think it's important. Again, the most important takeaways from this poll is A, CNN is not a news organization. OK. B. Um, <laughs> Number one. That's just I think yeah. we can all agree. Sure. It's so like if they would have been better off. They would have had more cover if they didn't release this poll. Yeah. <laughs> it's CNN just the facts. Yeah. Like, yeah, but you did a poll with 75 percent non-Republican respondents. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let's just 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 remember. CNN looked, searched high and low and asked every pollster they could, can anyone come up with these numbers? No? All right, let's make our own. Yeah, yeah. let's <laughs> make our own. Let's just, nobody, nobody. What if okay. we just wrote Chris, our own? Chris Cuomo was yeah. like, I want to get Mr. Gallup on the phone. <laughs> this is Chris Cuomo. Well, first off, uh, there is no Mr. Gallup, and second, you're naked. I don't know if this is another wife <laughs> yoga it's video. It's what I do. Hmm. Well, then I guess I'll take Mr. Quinnipiniac. <laughs> Put your dick away, Chris. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, So, number one, CNN is not a news organization. Two, there's a huge difference between polling people on personality traits, like how do you think Donald Trump uh, presents the country? Do you think Donald Trump is right versus specific policies? Should we send in the National Guard? Should we defund the police? Those are the polls that you should be looking at to get a more accurate gauge at this point and still taking into account that there is a huge handicap, 75% non-Republican responders with CNN. And the most important takeaway here is this shouldn't affect your, 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 your voting pattern or your canvassing patterns at all. You still need to go out. You still need to change people's minds. That's what cha- changed my mind, right? Didn't exist before the last yeah. election. That's what it's for. It's to walk people down the path of rationalizing their own argument. There are far more people, as you see with these individual policy polls, who are more conservative than they realize. So all of you have a job to do that. Don't think, well, because there's high enthusiasm, Donald Trump's going to win anyway. Assume that he won't. Assume the worst and work for the best. Know that these polls, that are, every time one of these polls comes out, they are used to try and manipulate the American public perception of elections Uh, just as much as they used to be used to try and gauge where the election is actually going. That's not the case anymore. Polls are a political tool at this point. Be aware of it and do your part. Guess who I am? I'm Josh Hartnett. 
Bet you didn't think you'd see that face in a while. <laughs> uh, this is what we call an end card, which is where I tell you that you should subscribe if you like this video or click one of these other videos that you may like. Uh, hit the notification bell, of course, join Mug Club because that's what allows us to continue doing these videos. And just so you know, YouTube actually has uh, created a new policy where they might start outright banning channels that are no longer commercially viable, which means that this is merely a figment of your imagination.